My name is Brian Schiller. Uh, welcome to Improving on Express. Uh, I'm a software engineer at Devitry, and our primary stack at Devitry has kind of migrated towards Express backend and either Vue or React, depending on who you're talking to, front end. Uh, so it's very API focused. I'm also interested in server rendered kind of like form style apps. Uh, that's not most of what I've explored here. Uh, the other main thing that we're talking about is going to be, uh, I'm sort of assuming TypeScript. Uh, so if you're not already using TypeScript, I'm not going to assume too much TypeScript knowledge, but I'm assuming that you are at least a little bit bought into the benefits of TypeScript. And if that doesn't describe you, uh, well, hopefully I can sell you a little bit. So uh, on Twitter, GitHub, and Denver Devs, I'm BG Schiller. If you are curious to see these slides or the live code uh, starting point is also up on GitHub in the same repo, uh, the slides will be available. There's like going to be a big repo after the fact that's like all the slides of all the talks given in Develop Denver. So uh, if we're saying that we're going to improve on Express, maybe we should start by describing what's even wrong with Express. Because we've had it for a little while. It's pretty good. Uh, my main complaint is that it uses callbacks for everything. And this is justifiable because Express predates the addition of promises to uh, like the standard library. Uh, you could get them via you know, polyfill long before I think Node even. But it wasn't guaranteed. Like it, it wasn't automatically there. So it's reasonable that Express used callbacks for everything. There's too many ways to return from a middleware, and return is in quotes here because it's not always a function of return. Uh, if you're in an express middleware, you might call next, and that will hand off to the next middleware or controller in the chain. You might call next with an error, uh, and even if that's not an actual error object, if you pass a parameter, it does a different thing than if you don't pass a parameter. It's up to the next error middleware. Uh, if you call res.send, you might never call next, uh, you could just send a response right away. Maybe you're like a login required middleware, and if someone gets to you and they don't have a login, you just want to respond right away. You don't even want to call the next controller. You could just return without doing any of these, and this might be a reason you see in your tests sometimes. Uh, timed out, 30 seconds. Uh, nothing happened. We never sent a response. You could throw an error, and it used to be that would have a similar behavior to just returning. I think in really recent versions of Express, uh, there might be a global error handler that just sends a 500, which is a good behavior. Uh, the final thing that I have, the final complaints I have about Express is that it's impossible to write type-aware middleware. And that's a bit of a mouthful. It's a phrase that I invented while I was like thinking about this problem. Uh, so let's unpack that a little bit. What is type-aware? Uh, well, I'm using Passport as an example, and if you haven't used it, Passport is a library for providing authorization and authentication, mostly authentication, to your uh, Express routes. So if you include the passport.authenticate middleware, then it will check that the person hitting the request or the browser hitting the request has a logged in session. And you get to control what that means. Like maybe you're using OAuth and JWTs, maybe you're using cookie-based authentication, maybe they just send a uh, login path, uh, username and password along every request. Those are all configurable strategies, but whatever it is, if you include this middleware passport, is going to check that they are using one of your allowed strategies. Uh, if they are, then rec.user is going to be available. Well, what I would really like is to be prevented from forgetting to include passport.authenticate. Uh, so if I hit the post endpoint, passport.authenticate is part of my middleware chain, so rec.user should be available. If I'm inside the, the controller definition for the news endpoint, that doesn't require authentication. Rec.user should be undefined, and it should be a type error, like a compile time TypeScript level error, if I try to use it. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that. That's against the rules. Uh, and I'd love to be proven wrong about that, 
from what I've read, I don't know a ton about type theory, but I think you need like a more powerful type system. I think you need dependent types uh, in order to make statements like that. Uh, and, and just from a more practical level, what is the type of the parameters to app.post or app.get? It is a request handler. And so that's going to be a function that accepts either rec and res, like our controller does, or rec res next, like passport.authenticate does, or rec res next and I think the first one's an error, actually. And four parameters for an error handler. Uh, and so in a JavaScript function with a variable number of arguments, like these functions are, the pieces that are a variable number have to all have the same type. So you couldn't say, if this one is of some type, then the next one can be of some different type where it's okay if, like, we, where we expect users available. All right, that's a bit of a rabbit hole. Let's, let's go away from that. We're gonna see a solution in a bit. Uh, so I said you can't do that. What does passport.authenticate do? In passports type definitions, there is a statement in like a TypeScript declaration that says in the global names in the like global module available even if you don't import passport in the namespace express the request object will additionally have a property called user maybe that's what the question mark is saying is it might be undefined. And it's of type n. So it adds a possibly undefined rec.user to every request. <laughs> I don't love that, right? It's, it's adding rec.user, but the types are lying to you, right? The runtime behavior may not include rec.user, and it wouldn't if you forgot to include passport.authenticate. Uh, so this brings us to our first bit of live coding. Uh, Great. So we're going to make a small API, and this is a little bit inspired by the website for Develop Denver itself. Uh, so we're going to accept logins, and we're going to allow creating new talks. Uh, so at the login endpoint, you are going to want to accept a username and a password, and those are coming off of the body. Can you zoom in a little bit? Zoom in, for sure. How's this? Okay. Uh, and it's possible that those weren't passed uh, if not username or not password. Then we're going to have a res dot. Uh, we're going to send back an error message that's going to say must include username and password, uh, and it's going to have a status of four twenty two. Uh, 422 is like uh, unprocessable entity. Uh, we had a bit of a debate at my company of like, what should we send if the payload has the correct shape? Or like, we didn't crash crash, but you just sent us a payload that was wrong. It was JSON, but it was wrong. Uh, and we landed on unprocessable entity. Maybe you'll come to your own decision on that. Uh, okay, but in the event we do have a success, then we want to uh, fetch the user based on, or verify the login, of course. And just imagine that this verify login exists. I've written some boilerplate, the pieces that aren't interesting for the top. Uh, username and password. And if the user isn't there, then the username or password were wrong. That's the convention that verify login is using it is going to return a promise that's either a user or null if something went wrong. Uh, so if not user, then res.json error uh, could not find user. And the status in this case is going to be, let's say, a 401. And if those don't work, then we've got a success. So we're going to write to response.cookies uh, user ID and user dot ID. All right, that's a little weird. Uh, cool, and we'll just send back a response. 
uh, res.cookie, and then I think we can chain off of this, right? JSON, I'll just say success. Uh, cool, so we've got some sharp eye programmers in this crowd. Uh, where are my mistakes? Missing the return on 25. Missing a return on 25. Now, why couldn't, why didn't I get more than that? Uh, anything else? Same thing on 19, I would call it, yeah, 21, same thing. I'm missing a return in that if statement. Anything else? Password checks? Uh, password checks is gonna happen in this function. Uh, yeah, luckily we don't have to rely on like our own eagle eyes. We have written some tests. So, oh, before we run those, I'm going to just want to uh, make sure we're actually running them against the right file. Uh, and then we're only, we've only written the login talk, so I'm just gonna skip the, this we just we ran out of time for. Okay, so I've skipped the talks, the endpoints for creating a talk. We're only running the login tests and we're hitting, we're using the same set of tests for both the baseline and what I'm going to call improved express. Uh, and we got some failures. Nothing happened. At the end of the test file. End of the test file. Oh, well, that's not a mistake I was even trying to show. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so we got a couple failures. Uh, it looks like we do set a cookie on valid credentials, but what's going on on these other two cases? We expected unprocessable entity got 200 okay. Looking back at the code now that we have a test failure, what went wrong? Okay, uh, the problem is JSON sends a response and by the time like it sends it off, it's on its way out the door, you can't change the status at that point. So these are order dependent. And we made the same mistake down here. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, uh, so let's talk about that for a minute. Why should these be order dependent? That's a weird, unintuitive behavior. Uh, in my opinion, the root cause of that non-intuitiveness is that we're calling callbacks. We're not returning a value from this function. We're calling dot status, dot JSON, and maybe it's doing something behind the scenes, which it turns out it is. Status sets a status, but doesn't send a response. JSON, so it's like, when you send a response, it will be 422. JSON says, if you were gonna set a status, you should have set it by now, and it fires the request on out the door. And that is not the type of like maybe you could write type bindings that would catch that. I think it is unlikely. Uh, I was hoping nobody would pick up on one of the returns. You get even weirder errors in that case. But one thing I want you to notice is we're using TypeScript and it never yelled at us about these changes, right? Like all of this is valid according to TypeScript. Uh, let me pause here and ask for questions. So JSON doesn't just set the 200 right away, kind of like what you were saying before? Even if the 422 is there first, it like has a check inside somewhere behind the scenes. Back when the code was like this, you mean? You're saying that it, when it sends the response, it's a 200. So why was, wouldn't it just overwrite the 422? Um, overwrite with 422? So you just, when you put it back to the passable version. Okay, so we're going to put it back to the correct version. Yeah, I guess based on what I, what you explained in the failure, uh, and. I don't have total knowledge of this, but why is JSON then not overwriting the 422? Ah, uh, uh, question. I think it just is because JSON says, has a status been set? Oh, it has, I'll use that one. Or it says, has a status been set? It hasn't, we'll use the default of 200. Uh, and that's how I imagine it looks. I haven't actually read the source. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if this was like a query builder, you would build the whole query and then there would be an exact function to actually do it. Maybe there should be only one function that actually ends the request. So the, just for repeating so everyone can hear, uh, the comment was, if this were a query builder, you would expect to like tack a bunch of clauses on, we're gonna set the status, we're gonna set the body, we're gonna set some headers, and then exec, like actually send it. And it, 
It turns out you can use it that way. Uh, and then it's very verbose. So there's a dot end, uh, which finally fires the response. And if we wanted to, we could, there are callbacks we could use that would do what you described and set the status, but not send it. And set the body, but not send it. And set the content type header to application JSON, but not send it. And then finally, we would send it. But we also are gonna want some convenience functions. And if those convenience functions exist, they're going to be on the same like object, this res object, as they're going to be on the same object as the non-convenience, like the verbose ones. So, like the fact that they exist didn't save us in this case. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I might zoom through this one a little bit uh, even more. Uh, I know I mean, this talk is perpetually short on time. Uh, so a talk is going to have a title and a description, and they're going to come off the body. And similarly, uh, if not title or not description, then uh, what are we doing here? Sorry. Uh, Res.status. <laughs> 422.json error done goofed. Um, and oh, we got a return. See, what, like, where's my TypeScript? Part of the benefit of TypeScript is you get that really fast feedback loop. Like, I want the red underline of you messed up, but it's right here. And you're still in the context where you wrote the code that was a mistake. I forgot that return, and, and only because I'm paying close attention did I remember it. It would have been really easy for me to just keep going like this and then spend time debugging and figuring out, like, why did it fail? Uh, okay, and then we're going to say uh, talk oops, is await create talk, uh, and that's going to be title, description, and here we do get a red under. Uh, it looks like property user ID is missing, but it's required. Oh, we forgot to grab the user. So, user is, user ID is rec.user.id. And they're saying, there's no user here. Uh, oh, we've totally forgot to write requires login. So, let's write that real quick. We're going to write it as middleware. There's login. This is going to be a rec res next. Uh, if not rec dot cookies dot user ID. Actually, I'm going to write this user by ID. Oh, it's better be an async function. Uh, this better be a request. Response, a next function, uh, ah, thank you. So this is the kind of like instant feedback. Those weren't even intentional mistakes. Uh, this is the kind of instant feedback that I really have come to rely on from TypeScript, and it's something you just can't get using Express as it is. We're going to go to a solution. Uh, I just want to drive the point home a little harder. Uh, okay, so we grab a user. It might be null. Uh, if not user, then we are going to res dot status. We're not going to be fooled again. Dot JSON error must be logged in. And otherwise, we're going to set rec dot user is the user and call next. And now it's complaining because rec.user is not a property that exists on type request. So this is where we have to do the same thing Passport did, basically, and say uh, module global. Uh, and if you're new to TypeScript, you don't usually have to do this kind of stuff. This lives in libraries, usually. Um, express interface request user may or may not be of type user. Oh. Oh, like 
<laughs> Alright, we're just going to have to live with it. Uh, okay, so we've got requires login. Uh, I'm going to cheat a little bit. So instead of saying, yeah, we're going to say this. Right, this is the best we can say, is that the user may or may not be, it might be there, it might be null. Uh, still doesn't like me. I knew this would happen. This is why I brought sheet she, she notes. Um, they don't include this. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, so you can see here I'm kind of mad about that user may or may not be defining. We can't even say any better. And it's still going to yell at us because we made a similar mistake earlier. We said, if the user isn't there, send this message. But we never actually returned. Uh, and this is another of those points that I made at the beginning, is that returns should feel like returns. There's too many ways to return. When I make a response, that feels like a return to me. And so I don't expect controls like control flow to continue to run. I don't expect the continue to I don't expect the function to continue to execute. Uh, all right, I think this required login works at this point. And now we can see rec.user is possibly undefined. So we better now check for that case. If not rec.user, do something. res.status 401.json error must be logged in. Now what's going on here? I thought we did this up here. Right? Didn't we write that same code? What's going on is that because in the type definition we can't say globally if a request is or is not going to have a user on it, we have to do the check to make the type checker happy. Uh, oh, missing return. And now the type checker is happy with at least that line. Right? Um, this is just dissatisfying. Like it, we're not getting as much help from TypeScript as we expect. Uh, now we finally have a user ID, so we can create a talk and then res.json just return it in the body. I think that works. Right? Have I made any mistakes? Okay, let's run the test. Let's just see. Oh, we gotta turn those tests on. Okay, so instead of x describe, skip describe, we're going to run an actual. Okay, one failed. Which one? Sets user ID to the ID of the logged in user. Expected 200 okay, got 401 unauthorized. I'm sorry. Are you using your middleware? You know, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, I pulled a sneaky one on it. Okay, so this is, again, just to drive home the point that we get no help. We get no help from the type system. We do get help on spell checking. <laughs> cool. And now all our tests are passing. Uh, great. So, Questions about this? How are we feeling about this? Ship it. <laughs> I mean, it passed the test. Someone was kind enough to write a pretty comprehensive test for us. Uh, but the development series, the development experience was a little subpar from what I've come to expect from TypeScript. Uh, so let's come back, see what we can do better. So uh, coming back to our complaints, it uses callbacks for everything. Right, this popped up when we were we had the status and dot JSON and they were in the wrong order. Uh, so 
it's not immediately clear why this is nicer, but we're going to change those callbacks into promises. Uh, we said there were too many ways to return from a middleware. We're going to remove that next function in favor of explicit returns. And that's made possible because we're using promises, right? If you return from an async function, that's your returning in a, in a promise, you're resolving the promise. Uh, we're going to add a global error handler, uh, which is also easier now that we're using promises. It was impossible to write type aware middleware uh, because there's no way to say this thing should uh, alter the type of the like parameter that follows it. Uh, this is related to if you've ever tried to write like a generic compose function in TypeScript, like a higher order compose function. Uh, you can't write one that accepts any number of parameters. Uh, this is a, a topic for later. If you're interested in this, let's talk about it later. Uh, promises are going to let us sidestep that requirement, that like limitation. Uh, so we can do this with promise chains. So introducing fascia. Uh, this is the new library that I put together when I was like thinking about these problems. Uh, where did that name come from? Actually, in our office, I was trying. I was like, I can't come up with a name. I don't want it to be like boring. Uh, Here's what, I'm, here's what the library does. And one of my coworkers, uh, Katz, who helps out on the conference also, she said, you should use this JavaScript library name generator. Uh, and that's exactly <laughs> what I did. Uh, but I do think it's like a somewhat applicable name. Uh, because, I don't know if you can read this, but fascia are sheets or bands of fibrous connective tissue separating or binding together muscles and organs. So I think it's appropriate for like uh, for connecting up some middleware. And, uh, I don't know. It's nice. <laughs> it's also on the outside of the building. That's the oh, that's a facade. It's my, yeah, it's do a facade, right? Oh, okay. Oh, I bet it's the same route. Right. Okay. So now this brings us to live coding part two. Different uh, So we're going to go to improved. It's going to start off looking the same. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is use uh, this library called IOTS. And it's, uh, if you are unfamiliar with TypeScript, the types are only available at compile time. IOTS kind of bridges this gap. It makes two things. It makes what's called a validator that's available at runtime. And it also defines a type for you. Uh, so we're going to make a IOTS type that's going to have a username that's a string and a password, also a string. And instead of this rec res business, we're going to use a new function from Fascia called with connection. And the way connection works is it accepts a handler. And a handler is a promise or is a function that accepts it eats a connection object, which is a new interface I made, and it spits back either a resp or a promise of a resp. So let's just real quickly look at the definitions for those. Connection has most of the stuff we come to expect off of the rec object. Uh, the body is unknown, which is different. I think in Express, body is typed as any. A resp is a body that's a string status code that's a number, and a set of headers that's an object. Uh, so we are going to, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I forgot a step. Uh, so there's another function that we wrote in Fascia called decode body, and it lets us write decode login params, and it takes a validator. Oh, is decode body. Cool. Uh, and so the first thing we're going to do here is decode login params on the connection. And it's yelling at us because we're not yet returning a response. Uh, so let's. So it's immediately yelling at us, which is like, you know, maybe a plus, maybe a minus. Uh, first, it's saying con is defined but never used. But now it's saying type void is not assignable to rest. 
you said you were going to return something and you haven't yet. So we're getting type checking immediately that you'd better send a return. No more 30 second timeouts because you just some control path goes through and it doesn't end up in a res.json. Uh, okay, so we're gonna just let that error hang out for a second. Uh, next we're gonna say user is await verify login. I better make this an async function. Uh, con.body. It's still yelling us yelling at us about that rest. I am going to oh I'm just going to return something small so that it stops yelling at us for a second. Uh, and we can see the other errors because they're more interesting. Uh, verify login doesn't like us. It said that you were going to give me two arguments. Okay, so I better destructure those. Username and password off of con.body. Uh, now this is really nice in my opinion. Because we use this decode login params, TypeScript knows that the body at that point is has a username that's a string and a password that's a string. So in, instead <laughs> of that somewhat ugly and repetitive code where we were pulling things off the body and then still checking if they were there, now we've like moved that into this type definition that's doing other work for us. Uh, Cool, so now we have a username and a password. We've got our user. We need it to set a cookie. Uh, so I'm just gonna start tacking things on here. Headers, set cookie. So you can see that it's still a little bit primitive. Uh, And that's because I like just wrote this. <laughs> and I needed to make my slides too. Uh, okay, so user is possibly null. We better check for that. That's the case where login failed. So if not user, now before we were doing that res dot and callback stuff, and then we still had to remember to return. But here, if something goes wrong, you have two options. You can return or you can throw. We're gonna throw. Uh, we're going to throw a new not authorized invalid login. And part of this with connection is that those errors are going to be caught and translated into responses for us. Uh, cool. We also have set cookie header. Have anything else? I think that's it. Let's just run our tests and make sure. So we're using the same exact suite of tests. Uh, we are just going to switch where we're importing the app from. Okay, we're all set. Let me pause here and ask for questions. Mm -hmm. So did you define your not authorized error somewhere and then pass it through the response? Is that in your library? It is in the library. Okay. Yeah, let me go to the definition here. Uh, so there's this thing called a controller error. Uh, and the main reason to have a custom controller error is so that, oh, this isn't the source. This is just the type definition. Um, it's defined in the library. I'm happy to show it after if we have time. Other questions? Setting all the status codes, too? Uh, the status code, so JSON is one of those helpers that I made. Uh, but like, there's no way to use it incorrectly, in my opinion. Uh, in, in addition to headers, I think we could also set status code uh, 422 if we really wanted to. Uh, yeah, we can look at the definition of JSON. OK, we can't look at the definition. We can look at the type definition. Uh, it, is, it eats a body that is of type any, and part of the contract with JSON is that it's going to take something JSONifiable, call JSON.stringify on it, and set the content type header. So that's the like shortcut that we're doing here. Uh, it also takes JSON options, which are an optional status code, an 
optional additional headers in addition to content type that you want to set, but it returns a rest. So it still returns an object that meets the same requirements. Uh, I actually didn't mean to do this just yet. Let's re let's make the whole thing by hand. So we're gonna set a body, uh, okay, status code 200 and headers. So that's like long form and it's not so long, but this is what a rest looks like. If you forget the body, you get yelled at, just like we want. Uh, if you don't explicitly set a status code, you get yelled at. And like we saw, there's like helpers to make common cases more uh, ergonomic, uh, but this feels nice. Oh, we also forgot. Well, it's not really it's not really JSON anyway. Uh, this isn't a JSON payload, but you know you can add headers. Cookies aren't something I've figured out yet, so that's why we're doing the set cookie header explicitly. Great. Is that so loud? <laughs> I mean, it's not for even TypeScript, it's just a really elegant way of using Express. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I am a fan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's do talks. Uh, just like last time, we're also going to need uh, requires login middleware. So let's write a fascia style middleware. Uh, it's also going to be an async function, but it just needs a con object of type connection. What it returns is a promise of something. So let's get to that. Uh, what it returns is actually an authenticated connection. So let's make a type for that. An auth con is just like a connection that also has a user property. And notice there's no weaseling about like, there's no colon or question mark colon. There's no user or null. If you have an auth connection, you definitely have a user. Uh, and that's what we're gonna return from our requires login function. Okay, uh, and right now it's yelling at us because we're not returning an auth connection. Uh, so here we can say if con.cookies.user or we can just pull it straight out. Uh, const user is await find user by ID. If we were being serious about security, uh, we would be using secure cookies instead. Uh, this just made my testing a little bit easier. Using secure cookies is not more complicated, but I wanted to make, in case anyone uses this as example code, this is not a secure login system. Anyone can pretend to be any user. You want to use signed cookies for this purpose. Uh, and we better convert that to a number. Great. And here we can say, if not user, uh, throw new not authorized. Must be logged in. Uh, otherwise, we're all set. So we're going to return everything that's on con and a user. And it type checks and we're happy. So let's move over here and write the body of the controller. Uh, with connection, given a con, we're going to require login on that connection. Uh, and then we are going to, oh, and here's where we would want to decode the body. We need to first make a type for that. So let's do that real quick. Uh, const talk or create talk uh, payload is a type. Uh, and if you're used to like C Sharp or Java, you can think of these as like your DTOs. Uh, these are your data transfer objects. Uh, it's gonna have a title. It's gonna have a description. I think that's it. Uh, so we're gonna require login. And then we are going to decode body, expecting it to be a create talk payload. Uh, and then we are going to take a connection and we better return. So in here, what was the job we did in the last one? We said they must be logged in. We checked this, these parts are already done. So I think all we have to do now is pull off the user ID and create the talk. So talk is create talk of everything on the body plus user ID from 
on.user.id. Uh, and we still get a return. This is the number one complaint is there's kind of a lot of correct at the end. It's like writing a list in list. Uh, okay. One thing I want to call attention to here, and I'm going to do something a little funky first. So in order to make, uh, make it possible for me to comment out one line at a time, I'm going to just change this slightly. You wouldn't normally need to do this, but I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. This is all still good. We're going to first make con into a promise and then use like a callback form of requires login. If we forget to include requires login, we get a precise error. You don't have a user. You don't actually have an auth connection. If we forget to decode body, we get a precise error. Body is of type unknown. You can't make a create talk payload out of that. Uh, if we forget to return, we get a somewhat less precise error, but at least you get yelled at. at like, right at the, at the correct time. Let's go ahead and run this, these tests and I'll, oh, I better turn it back on. I'll also ask for questions while those are running. Mm -hmm. So then, are you, is the recommended way you said to basically move all of what you would put in middleware and then promise chain and with action? Absolutely, yeah. So the question was, is the recommended way to use this to move all of what you would call express middleware move them into the promise chain. That is what I recommend. Yeah, and so the I would call them like fascia middleware. There are functions that take a connection and return a connection or a slightly modified connection in the case of like requires login, decode body. Uh, if you have a bunch of express middleware, I'm like most of the way thought through an automatically generating, like you have an express middleware, this transforms it into like a promise style fascia middleware. You still have to add the type stuff yourself. Uh, but uh, yeah, I can show an example if we have time. I'm not sure we're going to have time. Uh, cool. Other questions? Okay. So great. We're actually doing pretty good on time. Uh, I think this is nice. Uh, <laughs> This, I mean, that's kind of the point of the talk, is I'm trying to convince you that this is fun, this is cool. Uh, there's a couple other nice things. Uh, there's a thing called PG Resource. Um, and this is still kind of in alpha, but I wanted to be able to, there's like a handful of things you always do when you're writing a CRUD resource. You're, you do like find by ID, find all that match some criteria, uh, get, or, Get by ID is the same as find by ID. Um, create a new one, update an existing one, delete one. Uh, and I wanted to make that really easy. So PG resources, right now it's part of Fascia. It might be like a separate library in the future that exposes all of these endpoints or all of those actions as automatically created Fascia middleware. And that lets you write things that look, uh, or I'm sorry, this is how you would create one of these. Uh, so you make an IOTS validator, uh, you derive the type from it. Uh, so this is how you get the TypeScript type out of the JavaScript object. And then you create PG resource. You do have to explicitly tell it what the type is. And from that point on, you have type checking that looks like this. So to me, this is like the platonic ideal of what a CRUD resource controller can look like. In order to update a talk, send a patch request to this endpoint. You must be logged in, requires login. Look to the colon item in the URL params for which talk. Grab the item ID from URL. Then you must own the talk in question, you must own talk. You can see a definition of this. This is one of the examples in the Fascia repo. Uh, there will be a link at the end of the talk. The request body must match this interface that we defined, I think on, oh, no, you have to make the interface still actually do the update in the DB. So this is the part where PG resource lives. Uh, it just exposes do an update as one of those middlewares, uh, and then respond with JSON by pulling out of the row, per, the row field of the con that this thing returned, the connection object that it returned. Uh, I love this. Um, 
there are some drawbacks, right? The code is sometimes a little bit longer than if you just wrote it using Vanilla Express. Uh, that doesn't worry me very much. I don't really care about counting lines of code. I more care about like what guarantees can I make about this code? How easy is this to understand and extend? How difficult is it to break? Uh, it does rely on a pretty strong knowledge of TypeScript. Uh, I avoided using generics in this talk, but it was a bit of a stretch. You kind of need generics and um, generic constraints. And those are things you can learn in a day or two, but it's like, you know, a text. It's something that you, you have to know in order to uh, use the library effectively. And then there's also just the, what's this fascia thing? Uh, where it's like weird, right? It's non-standard. And every, you only get so much weirdness that is allowable in a code base. Uh, so like being non-standard is itself kind of a drawback. Uh, I think that it's worth it. The next steps for me, or sorry, next steps for you are to give it a try. Uh, this is still in alpha, so you'll have to use the, the at next tag in order to download it. I claimed the name from someone else on NPM who had just like made a completely empty package called Fascia. I think he had plans for what he was going to do with it, but never followed through. Uh, so if you install Fascia without the at next, because I haven't done a release, you're just gonna get like an empty package and it's not gonna do any of the cool things I talked about. Uh, we are open to contributors. If you have ideas, uh, I'm so specifically excited about like, like talk. let's talk about PG resources. This is a good pattern. Are there other things we could do? Uh, if someone's excited about Mongo, maybe we want a Mongo version. I don't personally want a Mongo version. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm open to one existing. Uh, I want to write some better docs with more examples. Uh, and that is it. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, let me ask the new captain. Do we have time to show a couple of bits of code, or do we have to take off? Okay, I'm gonna, uh, feel free to take off. I understand if you've got other events you wanna get to. During the shuffle, I'm gonna pull up the source code for Fascia, uh, and it seemed like there were a couple people interested in like some implementation details. Remind me of your question. Oh, about Aaron Yeah, so I'm gonna start with Aaron here, please. Okay, so this is the whole error handler. Uh, it says, if error is an instance of controller error, then we know it has a dot to response method. Uh, what does controller error look like? It's an extension of error, and that's so that we can check for it using an instance of check. Uh, we use to response, which just grabs the message, grabs the status code, sets no headers. Uh, and then we're gonna subclass controller error to use client error, and it sets the status code to 400, or not authorized, which, set, which sets it to 401. So we're just catching all of those at the end. Uh, where does that get called? It's right here. So this is the whole definition of that magic with connection function. Uh, as promise is just a little bit of sleight of hand, so that if someone gives me a value, I can turn it into a promise for sure. Uh, it calls handler on, like the handler that was passed in on the connection, which we create off of the request. It catches it and hands the errors to error handler. And then we have this fire response function that basically sets, like you gave me a resp, which had, was an object with a bunch of headers. We're gonna actually call res.status to set the status code. We're gonna call set header. We're going to call send with the body. Um, I think we have time for one more question about source or about anything. Cool. Uh, if you're excited about this, uh, the slides are available. Hit me up on Denver Devs. Uh, I think this is a fun idea. The next thing I'm excited to play with on this is actually like form handling. I couldn't find a good form handling or like form processing library, something like Django Forms. As far as I can tell, it doesn't exist in Nodeland. Uh, I think that that would be good, and it would be nice to make an adapter for this the same way we have kind of PG resource 
which I think of as kind of a API center. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Thank you.